Welcome to Bragg Radio, which is all about being rich and generous. Every week, your host, Candace, and best-selling author Larry Goins will show you how to be rich and generous by investing in real estate. Broadcasting around the world on the Bragg Radio Network from the flagship station WBT in beautiful uptown Charlotte, here are your hosts, the rock stars of real estate, Candace and Larry. What's happening? How are you doing, Candace? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing excellent. Good to see you. I'm really excited about this show. <laughs> are you? <laughs> I'm excited about every show. I know. I know. I'm not sure what makes this one different. Yeah, well, I don't know what makes it different other than you're getting ready to go on vacation soon. Soon, yeah. Not right. soon enough. Well, how do you mean? How do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to miss you. I'm going to go into KDTs for those two and a half weeks. You do that over a weekend. It's it's, it's when I stopped answering your emails over a weekend, you started. What's going on? I start panicking. What's going on? What's What's wrong? Texting Matt. My wife says, leave me alone. Leave you alone. Leave her alone. Leave her alone. (laughs) Well, my wife says, leave me alone, too. (laughs) That's that's in a different way. Another show that has nothing to do with us right here. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> That's funny. So um, today's show, I'm really excited about our topic. By the way, if you're just now joining us, Brag Radio, be rich and generous. It's all about investing in in real estate. We teach you how to be an active investor or a passive investor. We're local coaches, mentors, and we uh, flip a lot of houses. We've actually done deals in twelve different states, right, Candace? That's right. That's exactly right. And uh, we can teach you how to do it, too. And we're in Lake Wiley, South Carolina. If you're a good listener. If you're a good listener. <laughs> you got to be a good listener, right? And you've got to be an action taker. Yeah, that's true. We can tell you all day, but it's not going to help. That is the key. So on today's show, here's what we're going to talk about. What are we going to talk about? Step by step, how to do your first deal in 60 days or less. First or next? Your first or next. Yes. Yes. Yes yeah. and yes. <laughs> Any and all of the above, right? Your first or next deal in the uh, next 60 days. And I say 60 days. I've I've had some students that have done their first deal in three weeks, right? We really have. We've had students. and do you think I was lying? I'm not thinking you're lying. I'm trying to enforce the fact with the people listening. (laughs) With the people. I have personally, you know, talked to um, a student just, what was it, two months ago? You went to a, um, you went to a RIA group. And um, she came into our program with uh, some of the material. And before before we had even heard back from the group with, like, a final total, she was requesting her tuition reimbursement from doing her first deal. That's awesome. Yeah. That is really and cool. Then, <laughs> I, I need to stop offering that. We, we give people their money back for their home study course. When they do their first deal. It's just she, one of the ten ways they could get their money Not only back. that, but she had done three. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. She had done, no, you can't get a refund on each three because you only bought one time. However, <laughs> you, That's know, hilarious. you got plenty of money now. So <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's it pretty cool. It was awesome for her. I was really happy. So what we want to do uh, this week is talk about um, specifically step-by-step step, exactly what you need to do to do your first deal. Now, uh, step number one. We're going to jump right in, okay, Candace? I'm ready. Step jump number in. one is pick Go a ahead, market. Jump. Pick a market, right? And there's a lot of different things you need to do to pick a market. Now, if you're already in a decent market, like in the Carolinas, we're in the Carolinas, but there's people out there that are in markets like Las Vegas or San Diego or Los Angeles Phoenix. or Phoenix, Phoenix is, is another is hot market. Right Dallas, Fort Worth. DFW yeah. area, Houston. All those are markets that I call growth markets when the markets are hot, they go up really fast. Super fast. Super fast. <laughs> and then whenever they, uh, whenever the market turns and gets soft, they go down really fast too. So what you want to do is you want to stay in, in, in areas that have low to flat appreciation, right? Mm-hmm. They go up gradually and then they go down gradually and you're always able to stay right below the market when you're buying, right? Does that make sense? To me. Good. Good. So a couple of things I want to share with you about picking a market. Number one, uh, you can look up home prices and home values at at city-data.com. You want to look for areas or MSAs. MSA is metropolitan statistical areas. You want to look for those that have a million plus population. 
Right. Don't get hung up in this having to be in your backyard. If you're in Phoenix or if you're in DFW or if you're in even the Charlotte MSA, you don't have to be right there in it. I mean, it, how long has it been since we've invested right in the Charlotte MSA? It's been about four years since I bought a house in Charlotte. We However, buy houses all over the Carolinas. Right. However, that MSA, the the um, happenings, that's not the word I'm looking for, the hotness of that MSA is going to trickle down to those sleepy towns that we do invest in right outside of the MSA. The sleepy towns. Is that yeah. another word for bedroom community? Yes. <laughs> that yours sounds dirty, but <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm pretty sure my term is the correct terminology. Am I right, Chad? You are correct, sir. Seriously? <laughs> Chad. Sleepy town. It means the same thing. Sleepy town. <laughs> I think they understood my terminology. They leave the M- it's people that leave the MSA to go to sleep and then they come back. Right. There you <laughs> to go. To go to work. <laughs> there you go. So, uh, so yeah, don't, don't get hung up on the MSAs. We buy a lot outside of the, of the big cities, but you want to look for areas that have low prices, uh, for fix and flips and also that have, uh, with, with, with areas or cities or MSAs that have lower prices. And what I mean by that is, you know, if you're in an area like L.A. or San Diego, you're going to have median price home is, you know, $300,000, $400,000, $800,000, right? So if you're in an area where the median price house is one hundred to one hundred fifty or one hundred to two hundred, dollars there's going to be landlord, more landlords there, right? Right. And you also <clears throat> want to look in areas that are older versus newer, Okay. Older versus newer. That's important as well. And and just just a few resources. Now how, old, how old are you talking when you're saying older I'm, versus newer? I'm talking Phoenix versus Pittsburgh. There you go. Right? So you just wanted to make that clarification. Or Las Vegas versus St. Louis. Yeah. I mean, you can tell which one is, right. you know. Right. They don't have a lot of older inventory that needs rehabbing. Just wanted to give the people a little something. Good. But there's... <laughs> That's why we're here. <laughs> give, 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 and never take. So uh, there's also you can get a lot of good data at uh, Realtor.com, at ListSource.com to find out the amount of transactions, the amount of investor transactions versus owner occupied. You can get employment information at BLS.gov, and another really, really good site is Zillow.com forward slash local dash info local dash info right mm-hmm. so that's step number one pick a market okay pick step it. number two is going to be setting up your business right now and what we're primarily talking about here to do your first deal in 60 days or less uh we're going to talk wholesaling real estate day trading i wrote the book about it right getting started in real estate day trading you can get in touch with candace to get you a copy of it here in a second yeah but um but I've had a lot of people that have done their first deal in their own personal name. Now, am I recommending it? Not necessarily. No, no. I'm not. But a no. lot of people have. But that's the second step is you've got to do – you've got to have some asset protection, right? So you need to set up an entity. Does it need to be an LLC? Does it need to be a C-Corp? Now, would you say that this has to be done before somebody just gets started at all? Does this need to be in place before somebody just is like, you know what, I'm going to try this out and I'm going to do a deal? Well, you know, that's, that's kind of what I just said a minute ago in the sense of I've seen many people do their first deal to make sure they like it and it's something they want to do before they ever set up an LLC. But you're going to get you're going to get hit pretty hard on taxes when you do it that way. Well, it depends. It, that that Don't you think? That's not necessarily true. The entity you're, you're in does not really matter as far as taxes depending on what you do, okay. right? But, you know, you can set up a corporation. It could be a C-Corp or an S-Corp. It could be an LLC taxed as an S-Corp or taxed as a uh, as a disregarded entity. There's many different things. Plus, you can do deals in your retirement account. So if you want to get more information on that as well as the book, contact Candace, right? Right. We've got two books that are in the Investor's Kit, actually. How, um, how to become – no, not how to become – becoming a real estate day trader, right? Getting started. Getting started Getting in real started. estate day trading. How, how, how We're long redoing it, so <laughs> I the get confused. The name didn't change. No, but the mastery kit's getting ready to come out. So anyway... Getting started in real estate day trading and HUD Homes Half Off for both in, both in the investors kit. You can give me a call, 877-LARRY-GO, 877-LARRY-GO, and we can get you set up with that. Welcome back. 
to Brag Radio, <laughs> leading the world to be rich I didn't know and if you generous. Were ready. <laughs> We're, we're over here swapping candy. WBT is really nice to us. They give us candy. They give us cupcakes. They give us water with our show name on them, as well as boxed water. Boxed water is better. Boxed water. Right. There you have it. So we're talking on this show about investing in, in real estate, how to do your first deal in 60 days or less. Right, Candace? First or next. First or next deal in 60 days or less. Yeah, right? I don't want to lose the people that have already done a deal and they're like, oh, well, I don't need any of this stuff. I guarantee you that there's something that you've forgotten. That's exactly right. And the. Because um, <coughs> there's stuff he forgets all the time. How do you mean? <laughs> so the first step was picking a market. You got to understand what market you're going to be in, right? Second step is setting up your business. Setting up the business. Setting up your business, whether you need an LLC or a corporation. Corporation could be taxed as a C-corp or an S-corp. An LLC could be taxed as a partnership or an S-corp or as a disregarded entity. There's many different ways to do it. And when you get ready, we are here to help you, right? Yep. We know what we're doing. We've helped many, many, many people, and we can help you as well, right? So step number three in doing your first or next deal is, in 60 days or less, is marketing, 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 <laughs> right? Marketing. <laughs> it is something that's very important. And, uh, I mean, I know we bu- we do a bunch of different types of marketing. We have a bunch of different avenues for marketing. And um, sometimes just having one sole one is a good way to get started so that you can make sure that you optimize that particular avenue at one time. But don't don't leave yourself that being your only avenue. Okay. I'm saying. All right. So let's talk about some different ways to market to generate some leads, okay? First of all, as opposed to marketing, there are sources out there that you can get properties like HUD, right? Right. We still buy a lot of HUD houses. Well, you do. (laughs) Are you eating? A Starbucks. (laughs) (laughs) Good job. Good job, Candace. Thanks for calling it out. Look, I can tuck it in my cheek and you can't tell. You're going to mess around and get us fired or something. I'm telling you. (laughs) It would be me. Of this the two might, of us, really, you think? This no. Might, this might be our last show. Will you stop? <laughs> anyway, let's talk about marketing. It wasn't time. <laughs> Squirrel. So let's talk about HUD, all right? I go for it. HUD, out of the 12 or 13 deals we have on the, uh, on, on the board right now, we've got a deal board. And if you, you guys want to come to the office, if you're close by, you can come to the office, take an office tour, and see the deals we have on the board, meet all of our team. But uh, a six or seven of those uh, 12 or 13 deals are HUD That's right. houses, right? Mm-hmm. And um, so I-, I will be the first one to tell you I love HUD. I-, I mean, I wrote a book about it. You guys can get a free copy by reaching out to Candace, HUD Homes Half Off. But there are fewer HUD houses now than there used to be. I remember a time when there was 150 HUD houses uh, available at any given time in North Carolina. Now it's probably like 50 or 60. Right. Right. And I mean, it dropped below that. It dropped down to hardly nothing there for a while, but it has come back and we are able to get deals still. Right. Exactly. The next is uh, MLS. There are MLS deals out there available. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I will also be the first one to tell you that there's not as many MLS deals as there used to be. Right. We've got a couple of our deals are are MLS, but um, the rest of them. Um, there's other types of marketing that you need to do to make the phone ring. You got to make the phone ring. That's very, very important. But if you make the phone ring, answer the phone. Yeah. Well, we're going to get to that. That's another step. (laughs) Simmer down. You're getting ahead of yourself. Well, and that just came up this, this, like what this week, last week, something like that. Yeah. So it's fresh. It's a fresh sore spot for me. So with marketing, with marketing, there's a lot of different ways that you can generate what we call motivated seller leads. The first way I want to talk about is direct mail. Now, there's postcards versus letters, okay? You can do letters. You can do postcards. I prefer postcards because, number one, it's cheaper, and number two, they don't have to open up the envelope, right? They don't even have to open up the envelope. So think it's about how many open. people see that postcard coming through, and if they're nosy like most people are, they're going to take a look at it. Who, who sees that other than the mail carriers? Right. <laughs> are you saying our postal employees are nosy and they're are looking you at our mail? saying they're not? <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. But I want to continue to receive my mail. 
<laughs> I'm just saying, if it's a postcard, it's pretty easy to view. All they have to do is whip out their phone and take a picture of it. That's right? all I got to do. I don't, I don't think that would, you know, I, I would be, I would be fine with that. Of course you would be. <laughs> they could become, you know, a, a bird dog or something. <clears throat> so there, there are um, a lot of different kinds of postcards. Some people like generic postcards, and some people like what's called branded. Branded would have your company, like our company, Investors Rehab, or um, Investors Rehab, or um, or Neighborhood Housing Group, which which are a couple of our companies. You could have a branded postcard, or you could have generic. A generic would just say simply, "I buy houses," or "We buy houses," or something like that. Right? Mm-hmm. We also use the brands uh, LarryBuysHouses dot com as well as Gabby with one B. Gabby buys houses. Dot com as well. And we just recently set up Candace Buys Houses, right? We, well, we set it up, but it's not pulling I don't think anything yet. Yeah, well, yeah, we could use that. But uh, so direct mail is really good. Next, I want to talk <clears> about is, is pay per click, pay per click advertising, right? Okay. A lot of people think you say paper clip. What's a, <laughs> what, what paper clip? How am I using a paper clip there? That's why I go pay per click. <laughs> right. <laughs> Enunciate. So so you see a lot of ads on Google, you go to websites and also Facebook. Facebook marketing and Facebook ad advertising is really hot right now, right? It really right. is. It's <clears throat> really hot right now. So there's Facebook ads, you know, you can hire somebody to do it for you or you can do it yourself. There's other sources out there and we can help you with those sources. You know, you just got to know what kind of budget you have to work mm-hmm. with because there's mm-hmm. some sources out there they don't want to mess with you unless you're going to spend $5,000 a month, right? That's yeah. right. And I mean, they're a niche though. They've got that they've got a niche market and that's the caliber of investor that they are comfortable hiring. That's mm-hmm. not the only caliber that other companies can hire those. So you'll be able to find somebody if you want somebody to do it for you. Right, right. Or you could just learn how to do it yourself. There's you courses could. and training out there on doing that as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, next source for generating leads is is what we call cold calling. Now, I'm not talking about just picking up the phone and randomly dialing numbers or dialing everybody on the street. I think this is you my least take, favorite. You could take – well, you can take your direct mail list – and you can upload it and have it appended. There's appending services that they'll take an address and a name, and they'll look up a phone number, and then you upload that to a source, or not a source, a predictive dialing machine like uh, Mojo or something like that, and it will dial the numbers for you, and then whenever somebody gets on the phone, it will let you know, and then you start talking to them, right? You don't have to dial anything. It's just dialing for you, right? Right, I know. I think the I think my thing is, it, is it's still cold calling. I would rather somebody else take the initiative and call me than me calling outbound well and that's a really good point that's the difference between marketing versus <laughs> processing <laughs> prospecting yeah marketing versus prospecting right you what said processing say? oh okay so you're what's you're in right. your water today <laughs> <laughs> i don't know but i'm not eating candy right now hey. you got a big pile of wrappers over there let me let me knock these last two out before we go to break, okay, go ahead. Um, you've got you've got door knocking. You can hire a service to do that. They'll put out postcards for you. You can also put out bandit signs. Everybody sees the signs all over town that says "We buy houses" or "I buy houses." And then you can also get your own website. We have really really good websites. We can make those recommendations mm-hmm. for you as well. And and these marketing tips, these marketing strategies, as well as about 63 more (laughs) are in the book, Getting Started in Real Estate Day Trading, right? About or 63? There are 63 more because there's 67 total (laughs) ways to find deals. I knew he knew. I knew he knew the exact number. That was just too coincidental (laughs) for that to not be accurate. But yes, they are in the um, Real Estate Day Trading book. That's included with the Investor's Kit. You guys can get that along with some of our links for our deeper training material, a copy of the HUD Homes Half Off book, schedule an office tour with me, talk about upcoming three-day events, anything and everything. Give me a call, 877-LARRY-GO, 877-LARRY-GO, or you could text the word B-R-A-G to 803-897-6063. That's B-R-A-G, 803-897-6063. Welcome 
back to Bragg Radio. All about investing in real estate to be rich and generous. It's all about real estate investing in. That's what we're here for. All real estate, all the time. To teach you real estate investing in. Half the time. What what to do and how to do it. And today we're talking about how to do your first or next, as Candace says, deal in the next 60 days or less. We've actually had many students that have done their first deal in as quick as three weeks, right? Oh, I know it. Now, I'm not telling you you can go out there and do it because I don't know how smart you are. Or, or how, how gr- dedicated. Or how dedicated or how much you're going to work, right? Right. That sounded kind of bad on my part, didn't it, when I said I don't know how smart you are. <laughs> right? Well, I mean, you it's the truth. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you okay. never know. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. There you go. So the first step was picking a market, right, because I don't know where you're listening <clears throat> to this from. We have listeners all over the country, even around the world. So I don't know. You've got to pick a market. The step number two was setting up your business. You know, you got to have some asset protection and entity structure. Step number three is marketing. We went over six, excuse me, we went over six, four, five. We went over four of the 67 ways to be able to market your, to get deals, right? The rest of them are found in the book, Getting Started in Real Estate Day Trading. And um, step number four is once you've got your marketing, now the phone's going to start ringing, right? Right. And it's time to answer the phone. Now, first thing you got to do is make a decision. Do I want a live answer or do I want it to go to a voicemail so I can call them back? Right? Now, I have an opinion about that. Okay? You also have to decide not to freak out when the phone starts ringing. Yeah, depending on how much you market, your phone may ring off the hook, right? Mm-hmm. Depending on how much direct mail you're going to send right. out, right? So, or how many how many ads you're going to run and all that good stuff. But, so, are you going to do a live answer or a voicemail? Now, you can set up a voicemail system. You need a good script. We've got scripts we can help you with. Mm-hmm. But um, but you can set up a script to where it goes straight to voicemail. It's an automated 24-7 message center. And some people actually prefer that versus having to speak to a live person until they you know find out a little bit more information, right? <clears throat> but I prefer the live answer. Uh, you also want to set up different numbers for your different marketing. So that way you can tell... Uh, you can tell your lead source. We have a different number for each lead source, like right. a number for direct mail, a number for Facebook ads, a number for bandit signs, and uh, a number for Craigslist ads. So we can tell when the phone rings what number they're calling. Mm-hmm. Our call system will let us show the caller ID of the number they called, not necessarily the number they're calling from. Right. right? So we can put that number in our phone and we know, you know, hey, this is a Facebook lead or this is a uh, direct mail lead. Right, so once you determine that, do the scripts change? This oh, absolutely, the scripts are changed. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, based on what they're calling from, uh, you know how they're calling or whatever, and the script will change from uh, live answer versus a uh, a uh, voicemail too. Right, right, right. So here, here is what what I, I want to talk about now, as far as taking calls. The absolute best person to take the calls, bar none, is you. Right. Mm -hmm. You are the owner. You're the one that that wants to buy the property. You're the one that's going to go out and look at the house if you're unless you're doing virtual investing. So you are going to be able to do this yourself. So if if you can't answer it, you could have an acquisitions manager, somebody who is going to go out and look at the house or is going to make the offer. If you can't have an acquisition manager, have an in-house lead manager. That's what we have. Mm -hmm. We have an in-house lead manager that takes all of the incoming calls, both buyers and sellers, and then he doles them out to the acquisition managers and to our sales guy, which is called an asset manager, okay? And if you don't have a lead manager, you don't have an acquisition manager, and you can't answer it, you can have a virtual lead manager, somebody that is, I mean, there's companies out there that will will take those calls for you. Like there's a company called Seller Snipers, and that's what they do is they take all incoming lead calls for motivated sellers. And then you could also hire a service like Pat Live. There's a Pat Live service that you can get, and they're very familiar with real estate. They have a real estate <clears throat> team. Or you could use you know, a, a virtual assistant maybe in the Philippines or something like that. But that is the next step is, is being able to take the calls. And I highly suggest having them taken live versus a – voicemail message if possible does that make sense candace it does aren't there stats on that too yeah we 
I know a lot of different people, our students as well as other fellow mastermind members and stuff like that, that have uh, that have shared that you know if you're going to to generate a lead, your best possible outcome would be by answering the phone live. And I will tell you this: if you're generating the lead on Facebook or on pay per click, in other words, if it's an online lead, right. If you don't call them back, if you don't answer it live and you don't call them back within five minutes, your likelihood of ever getting a deal is cut in half, 50 percent. Right there. Right. Right. Right on the spot. And if you don't get them on the phone within 24 hours, it cuts down to 90 percent. So you have a 10 percent chance of ever doing anything with this person if you can't get them on the phone in 24 hours. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's that's from other people who are in the business sharing stats. Right. right? So it's very, very important, especially an online lead. If you're generating a lead on Facebook, it's or or pay per click. It's very, very important. So now once we've taken the call, once you get them on the phone, let's talk a little bit about negotiating. Right. (laughs) It's very important that you that you understand a little bit about sales and negotiating. That's very, very important. And there's some really um, good books out there too. There are on some, negotiating and sales. There are some books. The one that you and I both just read is <laughs> "Never Split the Difference," right? Right. That's a good one. I finished it a while ago, but yeah. You know. Well, you've listened to it a couple of times. I have. Right. So I think I've listened to it one one and a half times or twice, maybe something. But anyway, there's a lot of good books out there on negotiating on sales, um, and, and in our trainings, in in our books, and in our trainings, we have. Uh, complete chapters on negotiating. Mm-hmm. But what you want to try to do if you can is negotiate the deal over the phone, right? Because remember, we're going to day trade this deal. We're going to wholesale this property. We're not going to buy it and hold it and fix it and flip it. We want to get it under contract, find a buyer, turn around and sell it and put ten to $20,000 in our pocket. Right, Candace? That's what I want. That's the key right there. So <laughs> That's there you what go. I want to do. So first of all, you need a good script, right? You need to sit down and take a little bit of time and put together a good script. You also need to learn to handle objections. I mean, what what if you're trying to make them an offer on the phone and they say, well, I don't want to talk on the phone. I, I want you to come out and look at my house. How can you make an offer if you don't come out and look at the house? You got to see the house, right? So you got to know how to handle those objections. You got to know what to say and how to say it, right? Confidently, right, yeah. Exactly. And then the other key is follow up, follow up, follow up because you're not going to buy it on your first phone call, right? 9 times out of 10. Though. That's exactly right. You're not going to buy it on the first phone call. So, step number 6 is to analyze the deal, right? You got to <laughs> analyze the deal. If I'm going to buy it and sell it the same day, aka real estate day trading, right? Like the book how to what is the book <laughs> Stop. getting started in real estate day trading getting started is that what the mastery kit's going to be too no no i, I told didn't you that, think so i told you that earlier but the book <laughs> is getting started in real yes. estate day trading how to buy and sell houses the same day using the internet available wherever books are sold or, or by calling candace <laughs> or call candace so um the next step number six is to analyze a deal you got to be able to analyze a deal. And to do this, to day trade real estate, it's very, very simple. You take the ARV, which is after repaired value. In other words, what is this property going to be worth once it's fixed up? Times 0.7, 70%. And then you minus out repairs. You minus out closing cost. And you minus out what you want to make. If you want to make ten grand, right, mm-hmm. for example. And that equals the most you can pay for a property, okay? And it's as simple as that. You realistically, we used to have an analyzer that we use. We don't even use it anymore. You can do these numbers in your head. If it's a deal, right? <laughs> you don't need to calculate it. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And step number seven is the contracts, okay? You gotta have really, really good paperwork and included in the book <laughs> is some contracts as well, right, Candace? That's right. So the uh, book Getting Started in Real Estate Day Trading, the book HUD Homes Half Off. Uh, some links to some webinar trainings for a little bit deeper education are all available. If you give me a call, 877-LARRY-GO, 877-LARRY-GO. You can send me an email to info at bragradio.com or text the word BRAG, B-R-A-G, to 803-897-6063, 803-897-6063, the word BRAG, B-R-A-G. We'll be right back. And 
we're back. Welcome back to Bragg Radio, leading the world to be rich. And generous. There you have it. Most generous. <clears throat> it's all about investing in, in real estate, right? Most of the to time. To be rich and generous. And today we're talking about how to do your first or next deal in 60 days or less. We've gone through many steps already. Right. First step, pick a market, right? Pick Sounds a market. simple, but you kind of need to do some research well, There's on some that. steps, and we can help you with that. Second step is setting up your business. Do you need an LLC? Do you need a corporation? How does it need to be taxed? We can make recommendations with that as well and put you in touch with the right people. Next step, number three, is marketing, marketing, marketing. <laughs> Make the phone ring, right? Make it ring. <laughs> That's right. And then next is answering the phone. What are you going to say? How are you going to say it? Right? Yeah, don't freak out when you make it ring. <clears throat> That's right. Next step is negotiating. Negotiating over the phone, right? Mm-hmm. You got to be able to sell the seller. You gotta, That's right. You got to get your offer out there in a way that gets them to like, them, like you and trust you and leaves the door open for them to call you back. Without having right? to go out to the house. <laughs> exactly. Because we teach virtual investing, <clears throat> right? Right. Virtual investing. And it's really important if you're in one of those um, markets that we were talking about earlier. That's if right. If you guys weren't able to listen to the earlier segments of the show, just go to braggradio.com and the whole show will be posted there. That's right. And the next step we talked <laughs> about was analyzing a deal. you got to be able to analyze a deal so you can buy it and sell it and put ten grand in your pocket. If it's, a, if it's a deal like we do, you don't need a calculator. There you go. Don't even need a calculator. Step number seven, contracts. Just before contracts. the break, we mentioned that. You need a good contract to buy, a good contract to sell if you cannot assign the deal, and you also need a good assignment agreement, right? Yeah. And we can help you with all that stuff as well. You need that. And now, once you get the deal under contract, step number eight is due diligence, Right. Due diligence. Some of the things you want to do for your due diligence is you want to drive the street online, right? You want to mm-hmm. go see it if you can. If it's close by, we go see it, right? If it's but, close. But enough. if it's far away, you can drive the street online, right? Google I Maps. I recommend that anyway. Google Maps. And uh, and then you're going to pull comps. That's comparable sales. What are other similar houses selling for in that neighborhood? You can pull those on Zillow.com. You can also pull them on a site called realquest.com as well, right? Mm -hmm. Next thing you're going to do is pull rent comps. You want to know what the property will rent for because it might be a rental-type property that you're going to sell to a landlord. Right. So you need to know what what kind of money it will bring in so you know exactly how much you could sell that property for, right? Then you want to get pictures, whether it's you going out to get pictures. Lots of pictures. A lot of pictures. We usually get about 100 pictures for every house. Love the pictures. Yeah, the thing about that is we want to take pictures, every room, any mechanical items, any repair areas, Mm -hmm. all four sides of the house, any outbuildings, street view both ways, anything. If there's a hole in the wall behind the doorknob, we want to have a picture of it, right? Mm -hmm. We want to know. And you also want to take pictures, um, if there's nothing wrong with it, if it's going to be one that you could easily um, either assign or... It, well, actually, whatever you're going to do to it, you could also take sales pictures, too, while you're in there to sell it, not just to buy it and show to prospective buyers for wholesaling that are going to fix it up and flip it. But you want those pretty pictures, too. And that Dan's really good about that. The yeah. doorway pictures, making the rooms seem really large and things like that. Right, right. And we also take a video. <clears throat> we we start at the front door. Right. He start, turns on his, his phone. And starts video recording, and he walks through the front door, and he walks you through the entire house describing every room. Right. right? Mm-hmm. So that really helps, too, to show houses and to get buyers to, uh, you know. We, we've sold many houses, guys, that person never even went and looked at it, right? Never right. even went to see it, right? Because we have so many pictures. We have a video. Mm-hmm. We have street view. We have comps. We have all that stuff, right? Right. And then the other part of the due diligence you want to do is call other realtors or property managers in the area and get their opinion as to the value of the house. And that was step number eight. Step number nine is now that you've got your due diligence, we've got to start building our buyer's list to sell this property. Now, now I know it's step number nine, but I always tell people work as hard at building your buyer's list as you do at finding properties. Because right? huh? Because it's much easier to find a house for a buyer than a buyer for a house. See, you've heard this before. I have. And you weren't eating candy, I so knew you could it was speak. Coming. 
<laughs> I'm out. I'm right? out of candy. The You're only out? thing I have left is cupcakes. Here, here use this bag. No, all you oh, have oh, is chocolate. Oh, you've already traded me. Yeah, all you have is chocolate. <laughs> you've already traded me what you liked for what you didn't like. So, <clears throat> oh, sorry. So, uh, anyway. You're blocking yourself. You really, um, you don't want to do that, do uh, you? Blocking myself. Yeah, I set the bag of candy <laughs> down in the... It was Lynn's blocking looking the out. video. Lynn's looking <clears throat> out. Thank you. Got to be able to see LG. So step number nine is building your motivated buyers list. You do that at your local RIA group. There's Metro mm-hmm. Line RIA in Charlotte. There's real estate investors associations and groups all over the country. Just go to nationalreia.com to find one. Or you can also go to meetup, M-E-E-T-U-P dot com, and do a search for real estate in your area, right? Mm-hmm. Meetup.com. And uh, you can also run blind Craigslist ads. What do I mean by that? You run an ad with a property. You don't even have to have a property available yet. But you you find a picture of a property. You put an ad on Craigslist that says something like handyman special, fixer-upper, cheap cash, right? And then when they call, I'm sorry, this property is not available. Our properties go very fast. You know, let me add you to my buyer's list. Are you a fix and flip investor? Are you a landlord? Are you looking for a property to live in? And the most important part is, are you a cash buyer, right? Yeah, that is very, very important. <clears throat> because we don't have time for people to go get a loan, right? Or if we do have time, they're going to pay more. Right, <laughs> exactly. Your time is valuable. Exactly. That's why all of our marketing says cash price X, right? If you want to finance it, it's gonna go the up. price is going up, baby. Mm-hmm. Right. If we've got to hold it, because just like you said earlier, a lot of our properties we're trying to day trade. So if we've got to extend the contract or if we end up having to close on it, we're going to have holding costs. Those are going to be passed on. That's exactly right. And if you're an investor, they should be passed on as well. That's exactly right. Now, you can also, if if you're selling a property that is a, a rental type property, you could also send postcards to absentee owners in the neighborhood where the house is and have other landlords call you Great to buy idea. that house, right? Mm-hmm. You're welcome. <laughs> so now the next step is after building your buyer's list, we got to get this property sold. Now remember, you've been building your buyer's list all along anyway, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to email your buyer's list. You need to have some kind of an email service provider like MailChimp or Constant Contact right. or something like that. <clears throat> and you can also text your list. There's services out there that you can text them, you know, like um, – like there's just a bunch of them out there. I can't even think of any one specific one, but there's a lot of them out there. Uh, but we do have a list of them that we recommend. Um, there's also RVM or ringless voicemail. You can have them go right to voicemail. You can have them go right to voicemail. Now, some of these, some of some of the, well, like the ringless voicemail, you've got to, depending on the state, you just need to kind of follow up with your state guidelines and regulations because some of these things they're getting kind of protective of the consumers about. That is true. That is true. But there's also some some attorneys will tell you that RVM or ringless voicemail does not fall into that category because their phone actually never rings. It, right? it might fall but, into but that also, category depending if they're on, on who interprets the law. Right. But also if they're on your buyer's list and they've said, add me to your buyer's list, then there's your permission right there. And bandit signs. We put out a lot of bandit signs to sell these properties. And last but not least, step number 11 is closing the deal and getting the money, right? Close the deal and get the money. You're going to have an attorney or title company handle your closing for you. You want to make sure it's an investor-friendly attorney or title company. That's very, very important, right? You're going to send them your contract and your assignment. I haven't personally attended a closing in years, right? We give them what's called a limited POA or power of attorney. I was getting ready to to say that. It's even been a little bit since we've had to sign on a closing. So there's your step. Pick a market, set up your business, analyze deals, marketing, taking calls, negotiating contracts, due diligence, buyer's list, sell it, close it, and get paid. So, guys, you can do this. You can do your own deal in less than 60 days if you want to. Or if you want me to help you, I'll be glad to help you. That's what we do. Just go to LarryGoins.com forward slash apply to work with me and my team. We will personally mentor you and coach you and help you. It's not for everybody, right? It's for this, it's for those that want to run, that want to do a deal really quick and get their business up and running. LarryGoins.com forward slash 
apply. Thank you, Larry and Candace. If you'd like more information about what Larry and Candace talked about, would like a free investor's kit or to schedule a tour of the office, call 877-LARRY-GO. That's 877-527-7946. 877-LARRY-GO. You can also text the word BRAG, B-R-A-G, to 803-897-6063. It's BRAG Radio. Be rich and generous on News Talk 1110-993-WBT. 